Hi everyone, I'm at the old family farm. This is not an operational farm, but it's just something that's been in my dad's side of the family for generations. We come down here and hang out on the land, it's very fun. Anyway, I've been wandering around the property and I've got kind of a fun idea. Here, here, here let me show you. Miles, come on, I found a new pile for us to check out. What's in that pile? Over here on the wood pile, we have some really, really old fence posts. This right here, this just looks like a regular old log. This is a piece of juniper wood that just would have been stuck in the ground as a fence post, essentially. It was a very common use for these old juniper logs. A lot like this, where you have a single juniper post, you have your rails that you attach that to, and then you would, you would have your milled planks between them. They're highly rot resistant. So I'm gonna cut it into this, see how good the wood looks, and we might take it home and try to make something nice out of it. I left my, my tripod in the car and I'm too lazy to walk back and get it. So I wonder if I can prop my phone up and, and try to capture this. I think we can make something out of this. All right, I'm back home and I can't wait to dive into this. And I think we've got enough wood here to make a small bowl. And don't worry, of course, I'm gonna make something fun to put inside that bowl. So stick around later when we make some juniper flavored crystal jelly candy. After cutting it into a rough square shape on the chainsaw and then adding a flat face by cutting it on the bandsaw, I attach a face plate, which will help me mount it onto the lathe so that I can get to shaping the bottom of the bowl. All right, it's hard to say exactly how old this fence post is. I'd say at least 50 years, but it could honestly be closer to 100. The main thing I wanna be careful for with a piece of juniper wood that's this old is cracks or fissures that run the entire way through the log. Juniper wood is notorious for splitting easily, and the, the last thing that I want is for half of this to fracture and fly off the lathe. I've had it happen before, and it's decidedly not fun. I did some stress testing with this piece of wood and felt pretty confident about it. But yeah, when you're working with a piece of wood that's been chilling out in a field for decades, it's always best to be a little extra cautious. So a little dangerous walking on the edge, sure. But listen, I, I can't help myself. I gotta see what this thing looks like on the inside. The heartwood of trees in the juniper family, of which there are a lot of species, are all rich in natural oils and chemicals that help withstand weathering and decay by repelling water, insects, and fungal infections. In fact, recent studies have shown that several juniper woods have displayed better decay resistance than redwood and western red cedar and even matching highly exploited tropical species. So which species of juniper are we working with today? Well, there are two that are native to the area that this fence post came from, the Utah juniper and the Rocky Mountain juniper. They are both extremely common and widespread throughout the West, often growing in mixed stands. The easiest way to tell them apart include the color of their needles, bluish green for Rocky Mountain and yellowish green for Utah. The Rocky Mountain junipers berry like cones are slightly smaller than the Utahs. And the Rocky Mountain junipers are all dioicous, meaning the trees have either all male pollen cones or female seed cones. While almost all Utah junipers are monoicous, meaning that one tree has both male and female cones on it. Uh, none of those help us here though, since this tree hasn't had needles or cones on it since, I, I don't know, your, your grandpappy used to walk uphill both ways to buy a gallon of milk for a nickel. But I have worked with wood from both species and this is closer to what I usually see from the Utah juniper, which is also far more common in the foothills near the farm where it came from. So I'm pretty confident that's what we have on our hands here. All right, so one of the real upsides to all those natural decay resistant oils in juniper wood is the smell. In my humble opinion, it's one of the absolute best scents on the planet. I, I actually ramble about it for several minutes in my juniper incense video. So go check that out if you feel like it. But let me tell you what struck me as I was cutting into this wood right here. I was I was kind of transported back to elementary school. You know that smell and feeling when you've just like fully lost the ability to pay attention in like your fourth grade math class and you purposefully break your pencil just so that you have an excuse to get up and use the sharpener so you can be on your feet and use your hands and just zone out to that freshly sharpened pencil smell. Yeah, this smelled like that, only spicier and richer. Okay, I guess I should probably talk you through what I've been doing with this bowl. I, I decided to do a slightly different form, kind of deep walls with a sharp angular base, mostly because I wanted to keep a much thicker base than normal to be safe in case there's 
not enough structural integrity in this wood. And you know what? I actually really like the look and feel of it. It did make for some tighter than usual corners on the inside of the bowl, but a negative rake scraper really worked well for that. Another thing that I love about juniper wood is it's really, really pretty and a super fun one to watch come alive with a fresh coat of oil. But before we get to that, of course you know around here I can't just make a bowl. I also need to make something fun to put inside of it. And lucky for us, it's juniper berry season. Fun thing is it's always juniper berry season. These are edible and I really like the flavor, so let's harvest some to make some candy. There's a scrub jay in here who's really mad at me. <laughs> After a brief deliberation, I was able to come to an agreement with the scrub jay and kept harvesting. Okay, so juniper berries, like I mentioned earlier, are actually technically cones. Right here we see the male pollen cones, these little brown fellas, and the juniper berries, which are the female seed cones. I'm gonna use these to make a Japanese crystal jelly candy called Kohakuto after I was inspired by a video by the great Alexis Nicole, where she made some with native plants and flowers as well. One thing to note real quick is that the berries from Juniperus sabina and Juniperus oxycedrus, both of which are popular landscaping juniper shrubs, are toxic. So only use either store-bought culinary juniper berries or those from trees that you're 100% sure about. Now that our juniper berries are all crushed, I'm gonna head outside because it's also red bud season. So let's grab some blossoms from these red bud trees to give us another tree flavor to play with here. All right, let's make some infusions. We're gonna bring about one and three quarters cup of water to a boil and then add our juniper berries and let this simmer for just about a minute or two. Kill the heat and let steep for five to 15 minutes. Now let's repeat the process with our red bud blossoms, only this time killing the heat immediately after adding the blossoms. Once they're done steeping, we're gonna run these through a fine mesh strainer. Now, the color of my red bud tea is looking pretty sad, and that's because my water is basic. So watch what happens when we add some acid by the way of just a tiny bit of lemon juice. Science! So cool. And don't worry, this won't overpower the flavor and make it taste like lemons. It actually just kind of punches up the natural red bud flavor. Let's do the same thing for our juniper so it doesn't look quite so much like someone who's dehydrated. I don't know. Never mind. Pour back into a pot and add six teaspoons of agar powder. This comes from seaweed and is a vegan substitute for gelatin. Let it hydrate for five minutes and then bring to a very light simmer. Then add three cups of sugar. Realize you probably should have used a much larger pot for this. Carefully stir. And as soon as the sugar is completely dissolved, go ahead and pour it into a greased pan. Now we just repeat the process for the red bud candy. And these both go into the fridge until they're nice and set. At which point, turn them out onto some parchment paper and start cutting them up. Traditionally, you cut facets into them so they look kind of like crystals, but really you can do whatever you want. After sitting out for a day or two, they'll develop this really satisfying, crunchy exterior while the inside will remain jelly-like. Okay, time to get back to the bowl and the moment you've all been waiting for, let's get that oil finish applied and oh, would you look at that. Look at that pop of orange coming out of there. This, this just never gets old. Now let's just part it off the lathe, clean up the bottom, and we get to take a closer, better look at our finished fence post bowl. To cut into this super old bleached out fence post and find all this color and swirling grain inside, I mean, I mean, get real, it's like Christmas. I really love that we have a bit of that rough gray exterior wood left on the outside, and I'm digging that little notch from the knot that came out. And oh, oh yeah, some ripples and shimmers that look 3D but feel flat. Say it with me now, we've found ourselves some fence post chatoyancy. Let's add that juniper and red bud candy and give it a taste. Look at this little bowl full of candy. Is this my most fun project yet? Who's to say? What I'm discovering, which is not surprising, is that the smaller ones have crystallized much more quickly than the, than the, than the big old honkers. So let's start with a little one, uh, juniper first, of course. Ooh. These are fun to eat. Juniper berry is a divisive flavor and I am solidly on the pro side of that divided line. Let's try one of the bigger ones. These are so satisfying. On to the red bud. This is gonna be a really crunchy one. Ooh, that's lovely. Nice subtle floral flavor in there. These are dangerously delicious, very fun to eat, really easy to make. Delicious, delicious. Thank you so, so much for watching. This was a really fun one for me to make, and I hope you'll come back next time when we find out... What's in that pile?